we legislators clearly overlooked the impact of Section 73.1 and the definition of child in the new Road Traffic Act 2018 when it was passed. Those provisions should have had an exclusion so that the child seat requirement does not apply to public passenger vehicles. Indeed, in most states in the United States of America, for example, there is no requirement for public passenger vehicles to have baby seats. And in our context in Jamaica, it is wholly impractical to require taximen and buses to provide baby seats and child seats for children under 12, which is what the law as written now requires. The enforcement of this provision is going to cause no end of problems for the transportation of children in Jamaica. And the police should desist from enforcing this rule in relation to public passenger vehicles until the law is amended. I intend to draft and bring to Parliament a private member's bill to cure this defect in the Road Traffic Act and I hope I will get the support of all parliamentarians to ensure its speedy passage when I do so. On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent and write. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a uh, one. A blessed and wonderful Friday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So, please, like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of every Everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now, my peeps. In the morning, yeah, to the name of Friday, the day when Mr. Michael smiled on some of the ones and ones them pocket. The day when some of the ones and ones them get them like a stipend from them hard work week. So right now, whilst traversing in the streets, please open on the corner eye yeah, continuously. Peek out on the corner eye yeah, because what? The old dirty corner boy them always out there alerts <laughs> yeah man may i tell you so right you know in the morning the hot topic we're in the streets right you know so before me get into the knockings and clappings make we address that one yeah real quick motorists must now have a car seat on hand if they intend to transport any child under the age of 12. so make could pause right there so real quick this is not realistic this is unrealistic in all terms of it. Whilst we do understand the plight of a child's safety whilst on a public passenger vehicle, is it that we are also going to see JUTC buses transporting children providing car seats and have them strapped in those vehicles? I don't think so. So why the regular taxi man? have to go in and pack it, buy baby seed for take up a whole space to carry one child that the maga carry and get half of the pay for it. So what I got happen you know, is this. Watch the video here. Yeah. Tell me now, it's a more than sign. That woman and her daughter there is so all long. We see about three taxi coming so stop her foot and she asks him if she's going to town and how is she going to no, 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 put her in her car. Everybody tell her the same thing. Transport around the road, my mom, and I transit. <laughs> you tell me, you tell me, what the world comes to? What the world comes to? What the world comes to? Because everybody has to say that you're not a chance because you're transporting around the road and I'm not a car seat, you put her in her. You tell me, you know, what, a slap, it's in the team. It's more than a slap, Miss. This is exactly what will be happening on our nation's streets when our kids need This is exactly what will be happening on our nation's streets when our kids need to attend school. Not all of us can afford the luxury of our private motor vehicles and have to depend on the public passenger vehicles to traverse the streets. 
Now, President of the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Service, Egton Newman, says compliance is almost impossible and I definitely support what he's saying. The regulation which took effect on Wednesday has caused members of various taxi associations right across the length and breadth of Jamaica to be very disgruntled. Some are downright refusing to carry small children, stating that they have already subsidized the fare to charge them half and they will not be purchasing any car seat to transport any subsidized fear users. Now we are going to hear from some of those disgruntled operators. Listen. There's no way, no way that a taxi should be asked to have a child with strained seat. Although we understand the safety of our people, we want to reduce fatal crashes. But having a child with strained seat is not practicable from a financial and health perspective. I've been choking my members from the Central Cultural Association not to carry the children because it's not worth it and I'll take it on history. What we are doing now as country operators is subsidizing the fear of children. When we charge 50% of our government station from government, mm -hmm. you see these people who are making these laws and the government of the road goes and all of that. They are not in touch with reality. People in Jamaica are behaving like if we live in a bubble. And like Jamaica is exceptional to everyone. The persons who make these laws, I was listening to the first man, you know, mm -hmm. about tax man not being exempted. These people are not in touch with reality on the ground. So as disgruntled as many of us are about this Road Traffic Act and this particular amendment to the Act, it is not new to the Road Traffic Act in Jamaica. What is new is that the police was instructed by the government to enforce this law. But it is definitely not new to the act. In fact, it was drafted in our Road Traffic Act in 2001, which was specifically deliberated by a joint select committee, which was made up of both political divides, so JLP, and PNP personnel formed that joint select committee and drafted that into our road traffic act since 2001. So this is definitely not new to the books. But anyway, make we get into the knockings and clappings right now. On Wednesday the 1st of February, Sometime about 9.30 p.m. Location, a place of them call Old Road Road at Tamsapen side, so at Spanish Town, St. Catherine, right along the riverbank. This brother here end up getting head top, lick off clean. Yeah, man, the man them fool it up a can up can. And this female also lost her life. Now, the man in the picture is known as Bruce Mackenzie. He's from a Thompson Road address in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. And of course, the female in question is known as Renee Carr. And the Spot News Media would have covered this briefly. Now I'm giving you additional information into the personalities of these two criminal elements. Now, Bruce is of course a known criminal a real old dirty kind of boy that has committed many atrocities in the spanish town division which is the saint catherine north police division now bruce has strong family ties and connection over there in the parish of saint elizabeth and as i've stated many a times that saint bess is slowly becoming saint worse as they are openly accepting these criminal elements in their rural quiet communities for hat it up this criminal element bruce was popularly known in the criminal underworld in saint elizabeth as grimy boss so tell me now when you hear a man answer to a name as grimy you know says a Dangerous knackis and clappies. Yeah, man. Now, as for the deceased female, the girlfriend of the deceased male, but this female is definitely one of questionable character. 
because she always seemed to find herself in bed with some men of questionable character, some real grimy knackis and clappies. Now the female is also the baby mother of a man known as Charles MacDonald, otherwise known as Troops, another well-known and famous knackis and clappies from the St. Catherine North Police Division. He is presently behind bars facing multiple charges and now she found herself in bed with Bruce who is also another knackis and clappies. So basically, you know, Renee just basically spread her bed hard so she have to go lie down at night. Many persons on the ground are stating that she was taken out in a hill of bullets because criminal elements from rival gangs took the life of her now boyfriend and did not take her life. And they are saying that she may have been the one that set him up because she is from the area which is the opposing side that is fighting that gang war over turf. And others are refuting the claim, stating that she was taken out in a hail of bullets, basically same time when the man them come touch Bruce because her body was found just meters away from that of Bruce. But however the story really go, Renee always find herself with a gunman in she hole. She like that. Yeah, man. And these are the things that will happen when you lie with dog, you are gonna rise with flea. But this time, a bullet. Yeah, man. Really sad to say. But I saw the thing set in the streets right now. The criminal underworld is very unforgiving and some of you females really need to understand that. And as we already know that there have been an upsurge of crime and violence in the general Era 4 police divisions. The Era 4 police division comprises of the St. Andrew South Police Division, that is Unsby and its area. The St. Andrew Central Police Division, that's Alpha Tree and its era. The Kingston West Police Division and its era. And the Kingston Eastern Police Division and its era. So all of them eras there has been hot spots since the past couple of days. So Commissioner of Police, uh, Anthony Anderson, has weighed in on all of this and is here to update you, the regular members of John Public, of what the police has set in place to combat the new surge of crime and violence affecting these communities within the era for police divisional space. Now we are going to hear from Commissioner Anthony Anderson. Listen. So I actually received a detailed intelligence and operational brief from the team here at era 4. Last year, of course, era 4 was one of our more successful or probably the most successful police area in terms of reduction of, of violent crime. We got a reduction of 20 plus percent in era four and all of the divisions were below what they were in 2021. So that sets the backdrop really for what is happening now and this year. We have to make sure that that trend continues. We have had a recent flare up in Kingston West that has received the attention of the headquarters, my own attention. I was there on Sunday to get a feel of what was going on from the ground. And today I've spent quite a few hours with the Area 4 team so that I could get an understanding of what is happening across the area widely and then more specifically in the Kingston West, Kingston Central Police Divisions. It's clear to me, and I'm quite satisfied, that the team at Area 4 uh, understand the conflicts understand what is going on and the sources of the violence. And there are very specific people who, coming out of this briefing, we will name as persons who we want and we'll also continue to put out a list of persons who may assist us with our investigations. And these are the persons of interest. I will have the operations officer for the area, SSP Steve McGregor, give those names uh, as soon as I'm finished. Our response to this increase in violence 
has been initially to deploy significant amount of assets in the affected area, particularly in Kingston West and Kingston Central. We then went through a process of identifying some of the key players and those persons who may have been involved in the violence, but also those persons who are organizing and orchestrating the violence in Kingston West and Kingston Central. It has been some of those spaces have been quiet for some time. And to the extent that we have managed to do a fair amount of social intervention in those spaces. As we're saying, there was a football competition that was taking place in the Kingston Western Division in the area of Beeston Street, West Street side. And that had got interrupted because of this violence. We're going to get that started again, but we're also going to get those persons who believe that they are going to disrupt normal life in communities and cause violence to go up in Kingston again. We're not going to have that. And so we will be targeting directly those persons. So there are some persons named. There are also some persons based on the intelligence briefing who are abroad and are impacting the violence here in Jamaica. We already had given some of those names to our partners and we will give some additional names to them and we'll be pursuing them here and there. Fortunately, we had an arrest up in the U.S. recently of one of the criminal gang leaders here and his second. And we are working with our partners to see where this goes. We're also, as a strategy, and along with our JDF counterparts, because they have moved in quickly to support us when we got the flare up, but we are now going to go through a process of deliberate searches within the areas that we believe that guns are secreted or that criminal gangs are using as their headquarters and other spaces. I'm not going to say anything more about that, but just be aware that deliberate and detailed searches are going to be a feature of our response to this. What is for sure is that we find unacceptable that criminals, gunmen with their own selfish motives hold entire communities to ransom. And these communities largely, and when you go on the ground, it is very clear, want to get on with their lives, make a living, have a livelihood, see their kids grow up and become productive citizens. It is very difficult for these people in the presence of these criminals. And it is our duty with the support of these communities, and we get really good support, we will make a difference there. So we're not going to sit by and watch these flare-ups go unchecked. As soon as they start, we're going to be on them, and specifically on the people who are a part of it. There will also be a series of curfews that will continue in the short term. There are already some applications in for cordons that will be put in place. There are a number of strategies in our toolbox, but overall they will contribute to the reduction in violence in Kingston. So on the spot, news media would have already provided you vlogs with these most wanted men. Men from the Kingston Central Police Division also from the Kingston Eastern Police Division, also from the Kingston Western Police Division, and from the St. Andrew South Police Division, which is Hunts Bay, have not yet gotten any from the St. Andrew Central, which is half a tree and hits policing area. But as soon as I can get that, I will most definitely be presenting that to you, the regular members of Jan Public and also members of the diaspora. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast on the spot news media yeah man